I've always been uh, a keen modeler from a very early age. Uh, my father was into models, his father was into models, and I suppose it runs in the family. My son uh, decided he liked aeroplanes. The idea was for me to learn to fly and teach Tom. Uh, as it happened, he learned to fly and then taught me later. Bob powered his early models with off-the-shelf engines he bought from the shops. They worked pretty well, but he got fed up with the hole they left in his bank balance. You know, I paid a lot of money for that engine. Uh, I've got all the facilities in my workshop. Why not have a go at making my own? And that's what started me thinking about building my own engine. But Bob didn't just assemble engines. He came up with his own designs and began machining all the components out of solid blocks of metal. He reckons it's simple. You have to be able to produce a very good finish to the bores of the engine. Um, you have to be able to make valves which seal, which are tight, and you have to make cams which are capable of lifting the valves off the seats and returning them at the right time. And if you can get that right, then the engine will run. OK, this is the first engine that I built. Um, as you can see, it's not a particularly beautiful looking piece of equipment. It's, it looks rather crude from uh, the outside which I suppose it is. Uh, this is because it was made using fairly basic equipment. I didn't have the milling machine at the time that I first built this. However, internally, it's uh, every bit as sophisticated as a commercial item. Ball set, Victor. Yeah, carry on that, yeah. Well, as you can see, this engine starts quite easily. Very smooth running. And, uh, when it first started, for me, it was just the ultimate experience. The first model I ever built, hadn't a clue whether it would work. I flicked it over three times, and on the fourth occasion, it fired up, and it just revved beautifully. You can hear how smooth running it is. There's very little vibration with it. That's typical of a flat twin. It's very smooth running. Just a, a delightful little engine. This is the second model that I made. It's a five-cylinder, four-stroke radial engine glow plugging ignition. Uh, it was built with the intention of flying this large model here. This is quite a complicated engine to build. The crankshaft is very simple. It's a uh, crankshaft for one of these engines is no more difficult than a single cylinder crankshaft. However, the, the more complicated things are the connecting rod, the master connecting rod, which has to carry the, fire, uh, the four slave rods from it, and also the valve uh, timing equipment is uh, quite complex. There's something in the region of, I can't remember if it's, I think it's 11 gears that drive the uh, camshafts on this engine. This is my third engine that I built. It's a flat twin four-stroke petrol engine. It's got its own separate lubrication system, a wet sump engine. This is the sump that contains the oil that lubricates the engine. As a precaution, I do run the engine on two-stroke oil because uh, it being homemade and my own workmanship, I don't trust it to uh, a degree. And if, if something goes wrong, then at least I may prevent total seizure of the engine. So I think at this point, we'll call in the, uh, my able assistant, the lovely Victor, to come in and give me a hand to start the engine. He can act as the throttle man, and uh, we'll make a start with the engine, OK? Oh, we need that. This is uh, a development which I'm hoping to start producing commercially in the near future. Uh, it's a four-stroke diesel engine, which in itself is quite unusual. It's a, this is a prototype. The build quality is not very good because I built it basically in two weeks just to test the principle. I had a spare cylinder and piston from the radial engine, which you saw earlier, which I utilized in this design. I think God gave everybody an art form, and my art form is to be able to machine metal. 